Today we're going to take a look back in time at the Stahl Goldfield, where in 1874 a collection of four photos were taken from Big Hill. In recent times, these photos were restored and combined into this incredible panoramic view by a talented Stahl photographer. Now there are lots of very interesting features shown on this image of Stahl. And what's of particular interest to me is the mining scene sprawled out along the quartz reefs below Big Hill, which showcases several different types of historical mining machinery. Today we're going to take a quick look at a few of these machines, and I hope you find them all as interesting as I do. Alright, let's start with the fact that among all these big winding and pumping plants, we still have a few mine shafts being worked by the humble, man-powered windlass. The windlass was one of the earliest devices used for mining here in the Victorian goldfields. Here at this one, we can see a miner resting at the top of the shaft, talking to his mate or mates down the bottom. Over here we can see one which is set up beneath a shelter, which would certainly make life more pleasant for the one up top winding the windlass. Here we see one with dual handles to be operated by two miners at once. Now the windlass was a brilliant device for shallow workings, and it conjures up romantic images of the determined diggers in the early gold rushes. But in a deep mining field like Stahl, the limitations of the windlass were a big problem. A good example of the determination of the diggers, as well as the limitations of the windlass, was given by the Yankee Company at Ballarat. They worked a shaft 275 feet deep with nothing but a windlass and buckets. 32 gallon buckets were used for bailing, and at one point the water coming into the shaft was so heavy that a dozen men working day and night for six weeks couldn't keep the water down. Yet they kept on, and managed to bottom their shaft, drive to the gutter, and work out their claim, making a good profit. But the methods used were certainly not ideal. Horse-powered machinery like whips and whims were a big step up from the windlass, and we can see a huge number of whims across this image. A whim is a winding machine where a horse walks in circles turning a large drum. A rope is wound around the drum, and the two ends of the rope are run over pulleys and down a shaft, so that as the drum is turned, one end of the rope carries a full bucket up, while the other carries an empty bucket down. These buckets were called kibbles, which is a Cornish term. Kibbles could be used with all kinds of winding machinery, and they came in many sizes. Miners were often raised and lowered in mines, sitting in or standing on kibbles, and if the kibble got caught on the sides of the shaft and tipped up, the miner could be thrown off to fall a great distance down the shaft. It wasn't easy for them to hold on to the thick rope or chain, which was often wet as well. Sometimes rings were attached to the chain so miners had something to hold on to, which helped to prevent such accidents. The curved egg-like shape of the kibble also helped prevent it from catching on the sides. It's interesting to take a close look at all the different whims in this photo, because while many of them have the same typical setup, some are more elaborate. Just take a look at this one hiding behind a tree. The rope is wound around the drum as usual, but instead of running over to a set of pulleys at a similar height nearby, it's run up across a series of greatly elevated pulleys to a full-size poppet head over here. We can just see it hiding behind here. I would guess that this company replaced the whim with steam-powered winding and pumping machinery soon after. This company over here has put up a poppet head over their whim shaft, and again, I'm sure the engine was not far behind. I've got a much more detailed video about horse-powered whims in the works, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Here's something else very interesting. Over here, we get a glimpse of a Cornish pump. One of the biggest problems in deep underground mining was, and still is, the groundwater. In order to access the ground below the water table, water had to be bailed or pumped out of the mine. Miners working with windlasses and whims used bags or kibbles to bail water out of their shafts, but this arrangement was not ideal. One of the earliest steam-powered pumping engines in the Victorian goldfields was installed on the gravel pits lead in Ballarat, much to the dismay of many of the surrounding miners, who felt that the introduction of machinery to the mines would be detrimental to the working-class miners. But if they wanted to develop the mines to their full potential, steam power was the only way forward. Pumping engines were employed as well as huge bailing tanks which were hauled up the shaft by winding engines. 
As the mines got deeper, the pumps got bigger, the most impressive of which were the massive Cornish beam pumps. These were held within great engine houses, which had an arched wall which also acted as a fulcrum for the enormous iron beam. There were a good number of these huge beam engines across the goldfields in the 19th century, but most mines employed a different sort of setup, and we can see part of one here at Stahl. This is very different to the beam engine, but it uses the same Cornish pitwork, including the pump, pump rods, balance bob, and shaft fixtures. This setup used a horizontal steam engine with a large flywheel. A long connecting rod was used to transmit motion from a wheel over to the king post of the balance bob, which was rocked like a seesaw, raising and lowering the pump rod in the shaft. Depending on the distance between the engine and the shaft, sometimes several connecting rods were used together, and where they joined, they were supported by an inverted pendulum arm, which rocked to and fro. And that is what we can see here. We can also see part of the balance bob. This was used as a counterbalance to the weight of the pump rod, so that the engine wasn't wasting energy lifting the heavy rod in the shaft. Sometimes, balance bobs were installed at intervals down the shaft as well. Now, I'm not sure if it ever happened here at Stall, but at some mines, children would climb into the balance bob for a seesaw ride, a trick which was not only dangerous, but short-lived, as the change in weight would throw out the balance and the engine driver would soon realise what was going on. You can see a brilliant reconstructed Cornish pump, the same sort as this one at Stall, in operation at Sovereign Hill in Ballarat, where you can marvel at both the size and silence of these amazing machines. We can also see that there are winding engines at work here, with rope running from the engine houses up over the sheave wheels of the poppet heads and down the shafts. Most of these mines are using flat rope, and we can see that the sheave wheels are quite wide to allow for it. Now, what else can we see? Hiding over here, there's a Cornish boiler, and we can tell it's a Cornish boiler because it has a single flue down the middle. Boilers were used to raise steam for all these engines. Just beyond the boiler, we can see a horse working a whim, which makes you realise we haven't seen any other whim horses yet. In fact, many of these whims stand idle, and a few don't even have any rope wound around them. This amazing panorama is on display at the Stahl Historical Society and Museum where you can check out all sorts of fascinating mining relics, models, and machinery. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick video. If you're interested in learning more about the fascinating history of the Victorian goldfields, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.